Doodle Bud here. This is my Vintage Pilot Elite, one of my absolute favorite pens. And today we're going to be comparing it with the modern version. And it's right here, still in the box. It's a fresh one. And the cool thing is this came from AliExpress. So this was actually sent to me from 365 Days Stationery. Now, a lot of times when it comes to AliExpress, you associate them only with uh, mostly your Chinese pens, your Jin Hao's, your Wing Sung's, uh, all your different ones as well. Um, and most of the time, if you see a branded pen on there, everyone gets a little apprehensive. They think it's a fake or it's a, a knockoff, something like that. But they actually do carry legitimate branded pens. So 365 Day Stationery sent this one over. And a cool thing too is we're going to be doing a giveaway with this. They wanted to do something special for the viewers. They've really been enjoying uh, the engagement from the audience and uh, working with everybody there too. So as a bit of a token of appreciation, they said, hey, let's do a giveaway. The Pilot Elite is a fantastic pen. This one has a fine point nib on it with the burgundy sort of maroon body. Really lovely pen. And for most, it's, it's kind of like your first gold nib pen. So we're going to run through this today, just compare them. You can see here, I think it's, yeah, it's still sealed in the bag and everything. So let's just rip this open real quick. Came in the box with all the gear. Whoops, a little too excited there with the plastic bag, but came in the box with all the gear, as you saw. Uh, comes with a cartridge and uh, the little Con 40 converter as well. So we're going to uh, give this thing an ink, give it a try. Oh, I can tell the differences already. Well, very interesting. So we'll be comparing the two. We'll see, you know, who does it better. But yeah, this is, it's a great pen. It starts off as a little pen, turns into a big pen. What don't you like about this? And uh, so we'll compare the two. I can tell right away there's already some differences. So this will be interesting. I'll just slide this off the clip here, put that in the box for the uh, winner, for whoever that's going to be. Good luck to everyone. I'll give you details in a moment how to enter the giveaway. Uh, but yeah, this is, I can already tell, quite a few differences. So let's just get straight into it. I haven't even written with this thing yet, as you can obviously tell. Uh, but I was very curious to see what the difference is between the two pens. Let's just go with weight right out of the gate. It's 13 and a half, let's say. This does have the little converter in it, so let's just pop that out. This has the Con B, uh, the vintage style one. This one, what year is this from? Tells you on the nib there the last two numbers. That's 7 8, so 1978, June of 1978. 18 karat gold. Let's see what the modern one is. This one was made October 2023, and they've gone down to a 14 karat gold nib. Going back to the scale, we have 14 and 3 quarter. I already forgot what was this again. Yeah, just about a, a little over a gram lighter, which makes sense. There's a little bit uh, heavier metal here in the cap. Now, overall size, they are fairly similar. This just feels like it's a little bit thicker, a little bit more girth into uh, into the grip and whatnot. You can see some differences here we have on the clip. We got the pilot on the clip here. We don't have that here. This one, it kind of caves in a little bit. You can see that profile along the clip here. It sort of does the flip side, it comes out and points up like that. They both still have... Um, oh, actually, this one's different. This is more of a crimp on, like it just gets pressed into the body versus this one. The vintage style has more of the spring clip. I do prefer that clip a little bit more and just through the overall styling. Both have the nice uh, slip cap. It does feel quite a bit different. This one's got a lot more friction on it. Um, we'll check down inside the caps just to see what has changed over time, I can definitely tell that uh, this cap is significantly lighter uh, than the vintage one here. Huge, huge difference in nib size, significantly larger there. Uh, we got It cuts out to see a little bit more of the nib versus it kind of points out there. Similar design here where the cap goes down and stops on the body and just a little bit difference in the profile, a little bit thicker, tapers down a little bit more. Now mine has a little bit of ink stainage because it's been sitting with some ink in it for a little bit here. Uh, but you can see here on the bottom of the pen change there in the feed, obviously. They still do have this sort of a clear feed. Mine was, this was new old stock when I got it, but it was sort of clear like that as well. But quite a bit of a different design in the feed. In case you're wondering, the caps are not interchangeable. That's, I don't want to go down any further and potentially damage the pen. So obviously dimensions have changed. Uh, very very loose on there doesn't sit quite right let's get you some dimensions let's call that 118.6 or so on the modern one 
118.4 in the vintage. 1234 on the vintage cap diameter. This just feels wider, so let's see what we got here. Yeah, 12.8. Obviously, how the Elite is done on the cap is quite different. I love it's how it's raised here and then filled in with the black paint versus here. Uh, it's put on, on there to the cap, but they have kept the font. It uh, looks like it's identical. 146.5 on the vintage, 147.3 on the modern. Same type of story on the section as it was with the cap. A little bit more narrow and tapers down a little bit thinner versus here in the modern one, a little bit thicker. Starts off with like 11 millimeters and about eight and a half just before the nib versus about 11.5 on the modern Elite and around 9.5. In the hand, I find the Pilot Elite is surprisingly comfortable. I was a little hesitant to get this pen at first just because it seemed quite small and not something I was really used to, but especially the looks on this one is what really got me on the vintage one. But it posts quite nice, turns from a small pen to a big pen, no matter where you grip it. If you're a crazy high gripper, very low, there's nothing really to get in your way. You just put it where you like it and it's super comfortable. Holding the modern one now, actually it's, it's quite nice. That little bit of extra thickness in the section, I do appreciate that. I, I kind of actually wish the old one had the new one dimensions now that I... I hold the modern one, but, and also the larger nib, it does, you do see a little bit more nib. Who doesn't like looking at a big nib? But the styling on the vintage cap is what really does it for me. This pattern, I think just looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, so this sort of caught my eye. So we have longer nib here showing on the modern, but the overhang is a little bit shorter versus on the vintage one. So I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to inking these up and finding out the difference. They're both a fine nib as well. For the ink today, we're going with Dynamine Imperial Blue. I picked this up at the Vancouver Pen Shop. If you know me, I enjoy my blue ink, so I'm always looking to pick up a new blue ink whenever I get to get a chance. While I ink up the pens, I'll tell you how you can enter the contest. It's pretty easy. You just gotta be a subscriber of the channel and then leave a comment below. Pick whatever you want. If you want a topic, uh, seeing as this is a popular first gold nib for people, maybe let me know what your first gold nib pen was or maybe what you're planning your first gold nib pen should be. The modern Con 40 does get a little bit of hate, some shade thrown at it due to the relatively lower ink capacity that it has. But I'll show you a little trick you can do just to maximize that a little bit more. So here, let me just wipe this off. I just did a regular fill. But if you see here on the back, um, there's a fair amount of air inside of here. Now, the, the Pilot has a fairly large intake bore there to fit on to the feed, their own uh, preparatory feed. And of course, I'm shooting ink out of here as I do this. So that's just sort of a bad idea. But what you do now is you just fill it up. And if you want to get a little more ink in it, you just drive the piston down a little bit while the nib is in the air. If I can get the focus right here, there we go. And just wait till you can see some of the air bubbles coming out. We still got more air bubbles, just a little bit of ink. Now we got just ink. Okay, so now we force the air out. You go back to the ink bottle and then you finish drawing up that last little bit of ink. And that will give you just a little bit more uh, ink volume for the Con 40. And don't forget, if you wanna make a total mess while inking a pen, be sure to be making a YouTube video. Here we go, we got the same ink, gonna use my Muji paper. Let's see if we can tell the difference. 18 karat, 14 karat, but very different uh, shape to the nibs. So I'm curious how this goes. So I wrote with the pens a little bit more. You saw me do this this quick writing sample. That's not enough for me to really compare things. So I went here and just wrote the exact same things top and bottom with both pens. Here is my feedback. 
pun intended. All right, so they're both lovely writers. They feel great in the hand. They all keep up all that type of good stuff. The vintage one, again, each nib can be a little bit different between pens. Feels just a touch softer, I would say. Uh, just a slightly different feel, a little bit nicer. This one's still quite good, very smooth. Uh, the feedback is a little bit different. I would say a little more of uh, like pencil, but a, a pencil you've been writing with for a while, so it's it's smooth, but just a touch more uh, friction, I guess. It is still very, very nice. Uh, I checked the nibs under the loop, and also I put a feeler gauge in between the tines. And I, I noticed it as well. It, this one writes a, a touch drier. That's why doing the standard wetness test that we do is when you scribble, 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 and then wipe. I wrote wetness in that case. It almost looked like this one was a touch more wet. Um, but in writing with it, I can tell, and even inspecting it and checking with the feeler gauges, that uh, the vintage one here it writes a little bit wetter. Now, I would most likely, again, whoever the winner is, you let me know. I would say I should open up these tines just a hair to get a little bit more ink flow. Uh, and well, let me show you a quick little trick to know which pen is writing wetter than the other. Here I have a standard uh, Kleenex, you know, like a facial tissue. What I'm going to do is I'll take the pen out and just touch the nib to the tissue. I'll do a quick count. I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, making sure to use the same writing angle that I use when I write, not pushing down hard. I'll show you how that impacts things. And that way I can compare the two nibs and you'll see right away, you can see the difference. You can spot which one writes more wet and which one is more dry. So this is a very quick visual reference. It tells you right away which pen is having more ink drawn out of it due to the uh, capillary action that we're going to have here in the tissue. So this way you can actually do this for tuning your nib. You can check it before, make your adjustment whether you're going drier or wetter, repeat, and then see how did it go. Is it writing more dry? Is it writing more wet? You can compare the two nibs. So yeah, this uh, the, the modern one, it writes nice. I noticed it would skip just a hair. Uh, on faster strokes, just not quite enough ink. Uh, but yeah, it needs a quick little tune to open up those tines just a touch. Writing with the pens, there's another little thing I noticed. So at the start, I said the uh, the modern one, the cap, is a little bit less friction, comes on and off a little bit easier. I did notice a difference though when you post it. So when you post this one, of course, it's on there nice, it's on there secure, everything's good. But there is just a little bit uh, of a wiggle to it. You can see it just wiggles just a hair here. So depending on your hand pressure and where it sits, my thumb kind of goes right here. So I noticed that it would just sort of move just a touch. It didn't, you know, throw off my writing or nothing, but just the way I grab it. If I grabbed it here, I wouldn't notice, but just how my hand sits, my thumb kind of goes right there, puts a little bit of side pressure on the cap, and that moves ever so slightly. The vintage one, there is a little bit more friction when it comes to the cap sliding on the front or on the back, but now when I hold it and my thumb touching there, this one doesn't have any wiggle in it whatsoever. It's it's quite solid. So yeah, I didn't notice that the cap moving just a slight bit while I was writing at all. After all of that, what is the final verdict? Who does it better? The old or the new, it's a little tricky. Uh, they're both very good for their own regard. I do like the little bit of extra thickness on the uh, modern version. It is it is quite nice, comfortable to hold. It's not that this isn't comfortable to hold, but I do like that a touch more. It is nice seeing a little bit more nib on the new one. I got I can't lie. It you know the cutout comes back further. The nib overall, as you can see, as I showed you earlier, it is just a little bit bigger. So that is kind of nice. As good as that is, I think styling wise, especially this, you know, hatching that they have on here, I would definitely give it to the vintage one. I do like the spring clip more. Um, it would be great if they brought back this pattern on the new ones. I don't know, I, I, they probably never will, but I do like the styling on here. Um, and then again, this nib needs to be tuned. So maybe I'll, I'll check this afterwards after I tune the nib. 
I did like the writing a little bit more with the vintage one. Uh, again, the nib is tuned just perfectly, so if I tune that a touch, maybe I wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. But it did just feel a little bit, uh, a little, uh, just a hair softer. I think the grinds are just a hair different, and you can have that from nib to nib. You could get ten nibs all the same, and you know you you'd be able to tell the difference between at least a few of them. And also just the the no wiggling there on the cap. It is just a little bit more solid, so a little more friction on it for the fit, but that does kind of trade off so that when it's on there, it is just a touch more secure. Answering the question, who did it better? I would have to give the win to the vintage one. Again, uh, styling points and some personal preference stuff going on. The modern one is absolutely lovely. I wanna thank 365 Day Stationery for sending this to review. Also letting everyone know that there are brand name pens available on AliExpress. I know sometimes you're a little apprehensive. I have been as well when you see a brand name pen on there. Some sites, again, you can't guarantee it, but at least with uh, 365, they got the real deal. Good luck to everyone in the draw. I will do the draw on March 1st. I will announce it. Again, we ran into massive problems last time. I, I Nothing I can do. <laughs> I'm going to randomly pick a name from the comments and I'm going to reply to your comment on March 1st will be the first draw. There will be possibly scammers imitating me, telling you to contact me over WhatsApp or whatever it is. That's not how it's gonna happen. I will make an announcement on the community page. I will tag you, you will get an alert. If your alerts are turned off, you won't get the alert. You're gonna to have to check it manually. So I suggest you turn those on. Anyways. <laughs> Good luck to everyone in the draw. Love to hear from you down there. Hit the thumbs up to enter. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, go ahead and hit it because you got to do that as well. Until then, we'll catch you next time.